On this episode of We Come From The Future, we've got smoke bombs and we're gonna set them off. We're also gonna talk about why the new Dark Knight Rises trailer kinda sucks. We're also gonna reveal the secret identity of Esther's lost book. All of this and more is coming up on today's explosive episode of We Come From The Future. This episode of We Come From The Future is brought to you by Click It or Ticket. Welcome to We Come From The Future, the show where we set the future on fire and then just walk away from the explosion without even looking back. That is how cool we are. And we do it a lot this week. It's the explosion episode of We Come From The Future, and it's time to look at things that go bang or that just could blow up in our faces. And on that note, let's look at this week's news, by which we mean things we consider too weird to ignore. This week, it turns out we're gonna save the world with viruses that produce electricity. Viruses called simply M13 emit electricity when squeezed, and now Berkeley lab scientists have powered a small LED screen with them. Any motion can power them. So we predict in the future, you'll have computer monitors powered by the motion of slapping your head while reading things on the internet. And here is today's widely unknown fact that's nevertheless undisputed by historians. Gutenberg did not invent the printing press. In fact, printed books existed 600 years before Gutenberg's Bible in China. The first movable type was also created in China, and the first metal movable type was created by Koreans. You know how those people are in the West. They're very smart, but they just don't have a lot of good ideas, so they just rip things off from the East. We also found out that your body's biological clock is at war with society. German chronobiologist Till Runenberg calls it social jet lag. It turns out that your body's circadian rhythms aren't the same as those of the social expectations where you're supposed to wake up early in the morning to get to school. So working hours may actually be destroying our ability to get healthy sleep and destroying our lives in the process. And most importantly for science, we've got a bunch of new clips from Prometheus this week, which means now we know even more about Ridley Scott's long-awaited return to the alien universe, which is landing on June 8th. And all I can say about that is fuck yeah. Bringing it down in five. Preparing to fire RCS. Four. Two. This does it. Prometheus has landed. What's inside these yellow bags that will make them explode? Let's go find out on this week's Esther Gets Experimental. Today's Esther Gets Experimental really earns the disclaimer, do not try this at home. We are making smoke bombs, and there are three main ingredients, match heads, sugar, and potassium nitrate. Now the match heads are just, so when I throw this at the ground, Hopefully one of them will light up and start the whole ball rolling. Uh, the sugar is fuel, it's something to burn, and the potassium nitrate is an oxidizer. Now it's a potassium atom, a nitrogen atom, and three oxygen atoms clustered around them. Our fire needs oxygen to burn, so the potassium nitrate around the sugar will provide it with a lot of oxygen right away so it can burn fast and hot. So for our experiment today, we're gonna to try two different kinds of smoke bombs with the same ingredients. This kind has all the ingredients just together in a powder, and in this kind, we've cooked the ingredients down into a kind of hard paste, so it's hard and it's all been kind of melted together. Each of these little bombs has 130 match heads in it, so we're really hoping for some good flame. And also, we're bringing our handy fire extinguisher, which you should always have when doing this kind of experiment, always. which of course you're not doing at home. Never. Never. So Esther, are you ready to watch things burn? I always am. Anna. All right, let's see how it goes. All right, test number one. This is a powder. powdered version, and we're gonna see if it goes off and how much it smokes. One, two, Absolutely nothing. Holy crap! What the f 
put it out, someone. Oh, uh, put it out. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that was awesome. All right, so let's have our post-mortem. We tried both the powder and the putty versions of the smoke bomb. The powder version, we threw it over and over and it totally did not work. So why did the putty version work when the powder one didn't? It's all just about how hard you can hit those match heads. Powder was soft and it was light and it just couldn't strike the, the ground hard enough. Now the putty was hard and it was heavy. And so when it smushed the match heads between itself and the ground, at least one of them went off and it made a lot of smoke. You could really escape through that smoke. It was cool. That was a great experiment, which you will not be doing at home. No. So that was, I think that was a very special episode of, of Esther Gets Experimental. And now for a very special word from our sponsor. In an effort to save more lives on America's roadways, state and local law enforcement agencies will be out in force nationwide from May 21st to June 3rd, 2012, teaming up to crack down on motorists who are not buckling up. Motorists are 75% less likely to be killed in a rollover crash if they are buckled up. In 2010, of the 22,187 passenger vehicle occupants who were killed, in motor vehicle crashes nationwide, 51% were not wearing their seatbelts at the time of the fatal crash. So buckle up. Every time you go out, day and night, it is one motion. Click. Law enforcement agencies across the country are prepared to ticket anyone who's not buckled up. No warnings, no excuses. Click it or ticket. It. It's the easiest way you'll ever save your life. Welcome back indoors. For those of you who haven't blown yourselves up, we're going to thank you. A few weeks ago, I begged you all for the title of this book I loved when I was younger, and I'd like to thank Unin, who sent me an email telling me that it's called The Reigns of Eridan, written in the 1970s by H.M. Hoover, who kept writing right into the 1990s. So I have a lot of reading to catch up on. Awesome. Well, thanks, Unin, for solving our first lost media case. If you have a forgotten book or TV show that you cannot figure out the title to, send it in and we'll harness the power of the audience to solve the mystery. Send us an email at wecomefromthefuture at revision3.com. And finally, something that we think could use a little bit more explosiveness. Welcome to the tragic trailer segment of our show. Now there's always a lot of trailers we could choose from, but this week we're starting with a pretty trailer for what we think will be actually a really good film. I'm talking about the latest Dark Knight Rises trailer. This week on io9, we laid out some simple rules for what makes us a little worried when we see a trailer. So let's watch this trailer together and think about some of those rules. Now the number one rule is if you don't see a lot of dialogue in, in your trailer, and that's what's going on in this trailer. There's no dialogue. There's just kind of people making constipation faces. Even Bane looks kind of constipated, despite the big masky thing. Well, there is a little dialogue. I think it's dialogue, but it's used as a voiceover, and it's Anne Hathaway saying, There's a storm coming. And then Christian Bale says, You sound like you're looking forward to it. And all I can think is, no, she doesn't. She sounds like those creepy twin girls from The Shining who are like, Come play with us forever and ever and ever. It's just not a good voiceover voice, and you don't want to have a trailer that's all voiceover. You don't want a trailer where you see a lot of things you've seen before, like you do in this trailer. And another rule, a cardinal rule that this trailer breaks, is that it contains an incredibly cheesy joke. The trailer ends with Catwoman getting into the car with Batman and saying, I was told never to get into cars with strange men. Another warned me about getting into cars with strange men. And it's like, what is this, American Pie? You're and making like a strange men in a car joke? And then what does he say? It's not a car. This isn't a car. It is a car. Everything Hi. we hear Batman say in this movie is wrong. <laughs> okay. It's a car. It's I don't care how car. you dress it up. Well, they had a flying car. They actually had historically a flying car in the 70s. It was still a car. Yeah, no, it's true. And so basically our problem here is lack of dialogue, too much constipation, bad voiceover, and ending on a cheesy joke. The problem is this is an epic series. This is the epic finale to one of the most beautiful series ever devoted to a superhero. And this is what we're getting is like cheesy jokes and constipation faces. We're not impressed people. So this movie better be good to make up for this trailer. That's all I got to say. 
that slightly depressing note, we're going to wrap up our explosion episode of We Come From The Future. Remember to look for us on iTunes by searching for io9. You can also find us on YouTube and always here at revision3.com slash we come from the future. I'm Annalie Newitz. And I'm Esther Inglis Arkell. And we'll see you next week when we burn with the dark night. <laughs>